if I could do this. All right, we ready? All right, welcome to welcome to Pod Caviar NPR. Uh, I'm your host Tony Baltimore. I have you Graham. Start back over. Give yourself a three count. Uh, three count. All right, one, two, three. Welcome to Pod Caviar NPR. I'm your host Tony Baltimore. I have Graham from One Graham Army in the uh, studio. We're going to talk about a uh, movie production, uh, Men of the Bags, that's going on, and we're going to go through all. <laughs> It's, it's pot caviar, motherfuckers. You know what time it is. <laughs> I'm your host, Tony Baltimore, and I got motherfucking Graham from One Graham Army and this bitch. Yeah, it was We're very doing this. It was difficult for me. I was waiting for my. I was, I was waiting I was for to, my moment. I was. I wanted to stay in character uh, for as long as possible, but no. Today we're going to talk for about my moment to be like it's Katie Caviar. I'm here on pot caviar. <laughs> waiting to explain to you about different kinds of pie crust. Have you ever exactly, noticed exactly yeah. your pie crust? This is uh, okay. If anybody follows the 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 um, pod caviar on Facebook or whatever. I was talking about off content, off season content, and this is exactly what it is. Where we don't have, we have a topic, but it's less structured and it's more crazy. So today we're going to talk about Men of the Badge. A, uh, uh, I think it's going to be a. Sh- I think I want to do fifteen minute shows. What do you think about that? Yeah, fifteen fifteen minutes on shows. YouTube. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, yeah. when you're creating a, a t- like a YouTube TV show, mm-hmm. um, first of all, fifteen minutes not only saves you in uh production expense but mm-hmm. it also in some way saves you in uh creative development mm-hmm. of this television program because oh, yeah. if they're 15 minutes at a time it's easy to bury things it's easy to it more than anything it's easier to expand on different right. ideas right you know and if they're 15 minute episodes now you're in a situation where you can do a string of episodes about one character yeah and then like a uh tree branch of other yeah. stories and there's gonna be a lot of tree branching too you know and we've talked about it before um like i said you you're gonna be the uh the mayor of the city yeah and we talked is, about this earlier what is my character's name um <sighs> damn. damn oh we haven't done that yet no we haven't beautiful <laughs> Beautiful. You want to you come up with your own. This is more of a. I, I give everybody their freedom to is, where they come up with their the own mayor, names. But and, if uh, the mayor is Booze McKenzie, is that <laughs> is that too funny? It, is, funny too funny. it yeah. is too funny. Yeah, I want it to be more. Uh, it's going to be serious, but it will have funny parts to it. And then yeah. we we will break the the fourth wall, so to speak. Not as much as Deadpool, mm-hmm. but it will happen. You know. And right, I understand uh, what you're saying. Yeah, and, yeah. And I, you know, we're going to be aware that we're in a show. Yeah, it's but difficult. Still, we have a story to tell. Yeah, it's difficult when you bump ideas off of me because I know earlier <laughs> you said, "Well, you'll be the mayor," yeah. and I was like, "How about the arch villain, <laughs> the head of this mafia yeah, gang, yeah. is my twin brother, yeah. the pale just, horse syndicate, the yeah. pale horse syndicate is just yeah. me with a hat and a All eye right. patch." <laughs> But yeah, yeah, you'll be the mayor, and uh, like we said earlier, you're the mayor of a city that is just controlled by the Pale Horse Syndicate, and a bigger storyline, and something that will come in the future, there was a time where we are, it's going to be set in the future, There's a, where there was a time where it was just lawlessness, there's a storyline called the Tactical Urban Nightmare where the local military or uh, militarized police force went in and really cleansed the city. OK, you inherited the city as mayor after that. And it's more of a um, uh, Judge Dredd type situation. Not Judge Dredd, but um, what's the other one? Uh I can't think of the name, but it was uh, Sylvester Demolition Stallone. Man. Demolition Man type yeah. of society. No, listen, you know? see, I had no idea. And yeah. I'm even so much more involved <laughs> in this project. Yeah. Because, you know, I had always kind of assumed that this project you were doing was, you know, The Wire. Mm, no. But it is sort of, but also like right. Deep Space Nine. And in an in a, in a, in a, in a attempt to control the society, the government and the police force, they have the ability to use certain um, aspects of technology, whereas the civilian force will not be able to do that. And there are going to be people who bootleg basically technology and they will be hunted down as, as along with the Pale Horse Syndicate who control the city in different aspects of, um, um, what is it, human trafficking, pimping, right. drugs, yeah. you know, gun running and all that. So it's, it's very... It's a vast world, you know, and the way that we're going to shoot it is is you're going to have to go through I pretty much every episode. You were going after a different leg of the Pale Horse Syndicate to get them to to make them weak so we can go after them. Right now. So as the mayor mm-hmm. in this, will I be 
Will I be directly assisting the law enforcement? Because I'm assuming you're going to be playing the... Yeah. Not the chief of police. No, no. We have the, somebody. No, we like have somebody for that. lead detective. Yeah, yeah. Show, I'll be a detective. Sort of yeah, a, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be that. Character. But um, but see, I, it's difficult for me to join in this conversation because <laughs> I had no idea that this was going to be like a Blade Runner, beautiful. Yeah, like, yeah. We're going to put plywood up all around my garage and paint yeah. it green. Oh, and yeah. We're going to do this. Oh, yeah. In a massive yeah. manner. I and, love uh, this. Luckily idea. for us, we are in Georgia where it is very a lot of movies get shot in mm-hmm. Georgia. And Absolutely. there are it's very liberal as far as where you can shoot and where you can't shoot. Mm-hmm. And we have a lot of. We have the means to make things happen as far as uh, editing and special effects and everything goes, and we can do all of this. And this, it's going to rely more on the storyline. I want a really solid storyline. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 But with you being the mayor, like we said earlier, I mean, you're you're just the head of a city, and you got to have the confidence and the, and the ego that you know you're the shit, and nobody can tell you anything. But the the the, the syndicate controls the city, and then the governor. He know he knows that, and then he's gonna shit on you. And what I say earlier, of the course. shit rolls downhill, yeah, you know. So yeah, he's gonna shit on you, and then you come to the police chief, and you're like, you know, shit on him, and then it falls down to the detectives, and then that's right. how it's gonna go, you know. But then everybody's gonna have their own different story. They're gonna have their own background, things that will be shown, things that we can use, uh, be used in the future as of prequels course. or you know, side stories. And and yeah. it, it it's just it's a living breathing it's, environment. It's so many stories too, and that's another reason why mm-hmm. I certainly support the idea of oh, yeah. fifteen minute chunks. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Because you can really you can use the very first fifteen minute chunk to sort of in, introduce everyone in right. small increments. Exactly. And then you go from there. Exactly. When people when actors mm-hmm. are available, when sound is available, oh, yeah. whenever whatever is available. You mm-hmm. shoot that out. And then, and now I'm glad you said that because the trailers for it will be at least 30 seconds, 30 to 45 seconds. And they will each um, they will uh, showcase a different character. And then it'll be a certain uh, line of dialogue that will really show them, you know, going through and yeah. really give you an idea of who they are. You know, absolutely. And that's just I, I mean, this has been it's been I think it's been eight years in development that easily. Yeah. I remember you talking about shooting movies long ago. Oh yeah, and I was always excited about it. You know, mm-hmm. when I was when I was mm-hmm. younger, like I had a video camera. I was always big into editing yeah. video. And oh like yeah, within the camera, Me and too. shooting movies, of course, and things like that. And then when I got hooked to editing audio, it became mm-hmm. a lot easier. Yeah, and I was like, man, shooting a movie is a massive undertaking, right? And it will be. It, it will be definitely, undoubtedly. Yeah, yeah. especially because. Uh, with me heading this up, I don't want to put out a subpar um, product. So there can be times where you, we take it, we take different takes and everything. And it, of you, course, you know, people are gonna be bad at me because you know I, I want to be a perfectionist. You have to take it serious, right? Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. And it's not because it's not anything against you or anybody else. I'm not being a dick, but I'm being a dick because in the end, when we put this on YouTube and it blows up. This is not a, just an opportunity for me. This is an opportunity for everybody who is involved, and you have you will have to you will have to tap into emotions, and you will have to you will have to tap into shit that you've been through in the past to, in order to go and and put. You know, it's like Daniel Day Lewis and how he does his um, method acting. Jesus, and, you yeah, know, that things guy like goes that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we have to at least expect that from anyone involved in a small scale, right? Because that, like you said. If people who do it aren't committed to it, exactly, and like understand exactly where things are headed, mm-hmm. they uh, they could sabotage its ability to be, oh yeah, valid, right? You know what I mean, right? Yeah, I have a question though. Yeah, Let's, what's up? Just, it, can can we have a little bit of fun here? Yes. Give me a line that the mayor would say. <laughs> no, a line that the mayor would say. The is only more reason of, uh, I feel like the mayor today uh, is because uh, I bought this three dollar dollar <laughs> office chair. That a line, has that, arm, okay, a line that the mayor would say. Let's say the mayor all of a sudden he went to a gala or whatever, and then the governor pretty much made fun of him and shit on him in front of everybody, and everybody's right. laughing at him. So he's come back to his office, and then he'll come to his secretary, and he'll be like, "Give me the police chief," and then the chief comes in and he'll be like, "Listen, I know." Look, I just got back from the gala, and I got shit on by the governor. And then, and then, hold on, hold on. You tell him that. You listen. I need your people 
to take care of this shit because you guys are making me look like a fucking asshole. Do I look like a fucking asshole to you? Do I look like a fucking idiot? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right. So I come in. Mm-hmm. Come in to the secretary's office. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Matter of fact, you're in your office and you call, you buzz her. Psh, bitch, listen. Because you got the biggest ego in the world. You know. Yeah. You're because basically I'm involved in all this corruption yeah. too, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm definitely yeah. not like. Of course. <laughs> I'm not a figurehead no. in this. No, no, no. I'm a no, central you figure are, yeah. in the corruption. Yeah, you're getting okay, kickbacks right. and everything. Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. Hold on. Yeah. We'll call her Janine. Ghostbusters. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Man. Janine! Get me the chief of police right this minute. Yeah. Then he comes in. He comes in. Yep. What's going on, Chief? Remember when I told you about that fucking dice game in Manhattan that was happening, that everyone was putting on social media, insert whatever neighborhood right. there, yeah. that was happening on social media? Yeah. That same day. Oh, hold on. Remember, okay, hold on. What, remember, remember in Big Lebowski when when uh, the dude met the other Lebowski and he walked in, uh-huh. and then he said that uh, like a quote. It was like he was talking oh, to him, but he yeah, was just yeah, saying yeah. it's something like that to where you're like, you know, hold great on. men hold go on. through great things, you yeah, know, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Chief police comes in, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, comes in, standing at my desk. Yep. What was I supposed to tell? He's got to handle this shit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Chief, I just left the governor's ball. Mm-hmm. The best way I can describe to you what happened was he shit directly in my mouth. There you go. And told me to deal with it. Yeah. So here's what I'm doing. You think this shit is cute. We may or may not be in bed with some of the worst people in this city. Yes, keep that. But yes. these fucking scumbags going on social media, yes. talking about selling crack in my city. Yes, keep going. Under my feet mm. in an election year. Yes. And you think that this shit is going to continue? Remember your brother? Yeah. Remember about playing ball? Yeah. You've got 48 hours mm-hmm. to clean the fucking streets up. And bring the money back in. Yeah. This last part was a little bogus, but yeah, 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 there, yeah, right? yeah. But you're on the right track, yeah, right, yeah, oh. yeah. I guess you got to take that and then amplify it even more because it's not it's not about the city. Well, it's not about it's me. about you yeah. getting shit on. Uh, it's about you. You uh, tap into that shit, uh, man. Uh, Think about the most embarrassing, publicly embarrassing stand fucking. A- stand by. I'm telling you, stand tap by. Into that shit. Stand by. There you go, Chief. Mm -hmm. Do you understand the situation I just left? I was born in the shittiest part of this city. Mm -hmm. I moved my way up. I connived. I schemed. Mm -hmm. I worked my ass off harder than everyone around me. Do you know how many people... Are buried? No, I was gonna say buried within the construction sites. <laughs> this, that sounds like Grand Theft Auto. Five. <laughs> uh, uh, well, you see what I'm going to, right? Yeah. When well, you tap into right, that shit, like, you know, you embarrass the shit out of me. Exactly. You would have to write it though. Yeah. Because that's, I mean, I'm making it up as I go along. Yeah. And I can't. Oh, you can write that, that shit. I mean, because yeah. it's you. Yeah. Because I want you to oh, tap into your it. personal feelings of embarrassment. You know. Yo, fuck yeah. Because I don't know what your most embarrassment moment but is, but see, you, do. as the writer, though, you could write it. Yeah. And yeah. then I would. Yeah, yeah. And then you I put would tap into yeah, that. Of course. Put my own spin on it. Oh yeah. Otherwise, I'm responsible for a lot. Yeah. Because otherwise, I'm gonna be like, hey, you know what I'm saying, yeah. Dad? Yeah. I mean, bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I I do want a lot of it to be not. A lot, well, some well, a lot of it to be ad libbed, you know, really for people to understand that. It's, I would imagine though, it's difficult f- in drama to ad lib too much because you need the right. story to land in yeah, so yeah, many yeah, places. Yeah. 
So I would think you would see my, least, my views is that you would at least have dialogue. Yeah, and then people. But my view was like, okay, there would be loose writing, and then I would be like, this is the scene. At the end of the scene, this is the outcome that we need to go to. Either you're telling them to go get this, you're telling them to do this, you're telling them to do that, you're telling them to fuck off, and then um, there would be a a uh, everybody would sit down, and then I would say. Um, uh, let's let's see let's write you know and i would have like an outline or whatever and then we would go from there you know but um hold on though because that chief of police <laughs> yeah fucking embarrassed the chief of here, police man. man you remember have you ever seen you've seen bad boys too right but is he a bad motherfucker though the chief of police or yeah is he a scumbag he's he is he is a person he's not a scumbag he really wants to do good but he understands that his back against is, is against the wall. He has his own personal demons, right. mostly alcohol and shit yeah, like yeah. that. But he knows that he can he he he's capable of doing the job. He's not a pushover. Yeah. But as the mayor, right? What do I think of this guy? You don't like him because the governor shit on you, and everybody's looking at you like you're failing because yeah, but of I would what have, happened. Yeah, but I would have some understanding of that guy. You know what I mean? Because the governor shit on me, so I'm yeah. pissed off. Yeah. Right? But what's yeah. preventing me from off. just being like, "Come on, motherfucker!" Like, you know, mm-hmm. what's up? Like, I t- you know, at a certain point, you got you have your anger for on, being bro. embarrassed, but then you come ooh, through and be like, "Come on, man! Ooh, like, yo, ooh, I know ooh, you can ooh, do ooh, this." Ooh, 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 yeah. Ooh, ooh. Check this out. <laughs> When you invited me to your daughter's birthday party, Mm -hmm. everything about me told me to turn down that invitation. Mm -hmm. Because despite the fact that you may have everyone else in this department fooled, I know that you are an affirmative action hire with little to no street experience. Mm -hmm. And I understand the story in the paper about you saving those babies from that burning building. Mm-hmm. But the shit storm that is raining down mm-hmm. on this city right now mm-hmm. is something that keeps me up at night when I consider the idea of leaving you in charge of it. Yeah. If you do not stop this scourge mm-hmm. of social media posts denigrating the law enforcement officials of this city Mm -hmm. i will put weird stuff in your old lady's butt i ran out at the end yeah but but you're on the right track though (laughs) right yeah Yeah, you get what i'm saying but see i I, yeah and i like that energy because it's not you screaming and doing wild shit this is threatening yeah it's it's tense where you're like right there next to him and you're like listen motherfucker like you know what you we know, know you, each other on yeah, this I, level. I know you on a personal level, yeah. you motherfucker. And yeah. for you to do this, yeah. you make me look good. You yeah. shit on me. Yeah. After everything I've done to I you, you like shit I on me. I need a better thing, though, other than like, because if the, if the governor just shits on me, uh-huh. like, I feel like that's not necessarily, a, it's not enough to go on. You, you know, it's the, it's the governor shitting on you in public. Right. You know, at a gala, I'm everybody's off. laughing. And then the media is going to get involved. Of course. You know. And then um, it's it's that whole it's a perfect storm of shit that will yeah. land on you. Yeah, as but the it's, mayor. it has to. But my my the level of that that I pass on right. to the chief of police or whatever. Mm-hmm. And now I will say though, the affirmative action hiree thing. <laughs> first of all, reference to one of my favorite <laughs> Dave Chappelle moments ever when he was like, "That's an affirmative action hire." <laughs> When he was on that, we got we got to come. I, I, we're gonna stay on yeah. that, but we're gonna come yeah. up with something else other than right, from the action. Just but yeah, that. no. Yeah. But I'm yeah. saying, but it has to be way more subtle. Than oh yeah, that too. Yeah. You yeah. know, of course. Like you know, mm-hmm. my nephew. Fucking. It's like have you ever have you ever had somebody that you really put in a position to succeed, and then they fucked it up, and they made you look bad. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. that's that's the shit. Yeah. You know, no, of course, naturally. But I was just thinking, like, right. as far as the reason why oh, I yeah. came out that in my head as a cat right. out of my mouth was, I was thinking about oh, that yeah. Dave Chappelle yeah. sketch. Yeah, <laughs> like, man. That's an because yeah. I remember when I saw that, I was like, that was on TV. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like that guy was like most white people. <laughs> When they see a black manager, are like, that's an affirmative action hiring. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's most, shit that, that would not be seen today. Well, that, maybe today. Well, yeah, that yeah. Button, but that button up shirt, white dude with his khakis on said that shit yeah. in public. And it was, and 
if you were like, what's a white dude look like? Right. And you were an alien, you'd right. be like, that guy. Oh, yeah. And he's like, most white people when they see a <laughs> black manager. I'm like, didn't you just start working there? Yeah. yeah right. It's a, it's a, it's, uh, you it's know, complicated. That's but like it's a, a complicated oh, issue yeah. to tap dance. And that's why it I'm is, thinking, yeah, though, yeah. that like, that's why I kind of brought oh, yeah. that into the Let's character. take a break and then um, we can insert some advertisements for your podcast and everything. And then I got to get another beer and take a piss. I don't even know if I you have know. any, but we'll be right you know, back. Yeah, we can do some shit. Do the LeBron shit. All right. Fuck LeBron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The bucket. <laughs> Are you tired of ruining your clothes with vomit every time someone mentions LeBron? Sometimes being clutch is being so good through the first three quarters of the game that it is not in question in the fourth quarter of the game. Sick of replacing costly electronics and furniture when LeBron says something like this? I feel confident because I'm the best player in the world. Or this. I told you my legacy is bigger than basketball. I've always told you that. Or this. I think for me, the worst thing is when I actually go and talk to the ref and they say uh, it was not. <laughs> or this. And for me, it's even more frustrating because I know how I'm, I'm officiated at times. Then you need La Bucket. La Bucket is a patented system consisting of a comfortable bucket you wear like a backpack in reverse. La Bucket reduces costly cleaning bills that result from the sports media, NBA officials, and the dumbest guy at your job trying to convince you that this second-rate Magic Johnson is the greatest player who ever lived. Get yours today by visiting capfsports.com or by calling 847-665-9238. It's the La Bucket. Never get caught off guard by that idiot at work again. Alright, we're back. Um, hi, Caviar. We're talking about the uh, Men of the Bags, the show. I'm with Graham and everything. We're going to do a 15-minute uh, block uh, episode on YouTube that will be uncensored, which makes sense because it's free. We don't have to do anything. and We Absolutely. can share it on uh, social media. Yeah. You know, the only thing that we probably have to do is uh, pump some, um, some money into advertising, but after a while, you know, it'll take off. Um, we did some, uh, what is it? Uh, dialogue in some the first cold half. Reading. So, yeah, some cold, cold reading, reading. Yeah, which if went I very can, well. If I no, it didn't. It did. I nah. mean, we're gonna improve on let, that. But don't let me go that far. No, nah, I mean yeah. we'll we'll improve on that. Do you know how much editing you would have to do? Listen, the idea was solid. Mm-hmm. It had the fact that I didn't like it had nothing to do with you. Right. The fact that I didn't like it was because it had to do with me, and I don't feel like I brought yeah. what I should have because I didn't know exactly what I was supposed to say. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I so mean. So we'll do some writing and everything. Um, we're gonna go and do Brie um, maybe in the in the Brie, show. Brie is, I told Brie I was like yeah, yeah Brie can the be the mayor's it. wife. Yeah, you, she you, could be the mayor's wife. You yeah, can't look evil. We can be the mayor's wife, and we need somebody that's that's part of the news. No, nah, and need, I talked yeah, to somebody about that. Maybe yeah. Brie could be a news reporter. Oh yeah, the mayor's wife should look evil. <laughs> Brie just is evil. But doesn't, <laughs> doesn't look it. But um, the, the <laughs> vision that I have, man, I mean, there's a lot of things that, I, that I've done research on. And then um, uh, if anybody's familiar with like Children of Man, Gravity and uh, True Detective, there's a, a thing called a long take where you just continuously shoot everything. And it has to be planned pretty meticulously. But 
it works out and I like it. You Are you know? going to do a bunch of single takes? I, d- I want to do some long takes, not overkill with long takes, but I like mm. long takes. Yeah, I understand. No, it's it's yeah. a it's a thing, too, for me. Uh, when I see one in a film, right? Obviously, uh, the biggest one I can think of off the top of my head is probably Goodfellas. Uh, yeah, when they, in the beginning when they come into the kitchen and everything, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, but see, yeah, you understand what I'm going. Yeah, yeah, that scene. Yeah, that scene. Well, yeah. and those those are so powerful, and they require so, and they require so much commitment on the part of the people involved and right. the people who are filming it. Oh yeah. And every now and then, when you see a really good one, and there's like a hiccup in there, right. like someone's smiling and looks at the camera or whatever. Oh, yeah. You can forgive it mm-hmm. because it's. Uh, I think as far as a film device is concerned, those long singular right. shots drive the movie forward. Yeah, they do. Hours. I think it's more realistic, too, because if you think about it, when you're awake, your life is one big long take. Of course. The only time you cut away from it is when you go to sleep. So, But I think also when you're telling a story with a movie, mm-hmm. it allows you to accelerate. If, if, if all the elements are correctly imposed. Right. In that one singular mm-hmm. long take, you have just essentially time warped right. hours, days, right. years yeah. of movie into like a little tiny mm-hmm. bit of dialogue mm-hmm. and a bunch of walking. Right. And you talk you about know? Goodfellas and I, I wrote down Children of Man where they did the, the last battle scene at the end and that, everything. No, they did a cup. They did. Yeah. They did several. Yes, they did. Yeah. Gravity that. was another one. No. Um, Gravity is a really good movie. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it. Um, I have not. There was a uh, there was a scene in True Detective season one where they did a uh, a raid on a house and everything, and that was a long take, and that was really good. Um, no, that particular scene, I don't want to slow you down, but that particular scene in uh, True Detective, True Detective, let's I don't want to go too far off the rails, right? But True Detective deserves an obscene amount of credit for the first season and an obscene right. amount of shame for the second season right. we the, talked about this though right we did i don't think we ever talked about it on not podcast, not on the podcast though. but this is a one-on-one thing with yeah. the, for her the first season put the bar so high right the second season was like uh, okay you well know. the first season of uh uh of true detective and obviously this will apply to the project that we're going to be working on right um the first season of true detective had Woody Harrelson and Matthew McConaughey. When I first heard that mm-hmm. that was the team that was going to be heading that up, I went, oh, what a great, a cop show right. with two guys who sound identical. Yeah. Right? Because th- at the time, I don't know that you would have been able to tell the difference between Woody Harrelson speaking and Matthew McConaughey. Not really, speaking. no. You know, no, it's a very yeah. interesting, like, East Texas accent from yeah. the both of them. It's a very similar... Set of course, of yeah. They, they, they drag they up the words the and everything. Yeah. What happened though was that it became one of the most phenomenal things I'd ever seen. Right. That first season of that show. Mm-hmm. The second season encapsulated everything I didn't like about the first season. None of what I did and tried to make it into right. that show. Right. And that's and the thing that we need to steer away from. Right. You don't. You, know? you want to avoid being overly stylized. Right. You know, right? Because they, I think that the right. people who made a sh- that show yeah. relied on the fact. But that they you were know, so we're gonna be stylized. in the mud. We're gonna be in the mud. Yeah. I mean, that's just how it is, man. It's gonna be gritty. And I'm talking about, and I wrote it down. You, know, I'm talking about '80s style. You know, the old '80s action movies where it's yeah. really gritty. You're talking yeah. about. You're talking, and I said this before. I said it in the last takes episode I was on takes with takes. fucking RoboCop, where it was like gritty and shit. And you were in Detroit, and it was crime ridden. You know, uh, Total Recall, Terminator, um, all those '80 movies that were really that they, they were gritty. Of course, they had some cheesy uh, effects and everything, but at the same time, it's like you really. You you watch the show, I mean you watch the movie Terminator Two. We talked about that on the last episode. It was just it was great because you were on the edge of your seat, and it stands up today. Yeah, it does. To any level, it does. Of scrutiny. Yeah, there was no decay in Terminator Two at all because it, it, that's something. And even on the last episode that we talked about nuclear war, it's the same shit, you know. So. Yeah, you know, but it, it's a, it's a. Uh, oh shit! Six balls in the house. Shout yeah, out to six Katie balls. Is in here. Motherfucking six balls. Six motherfucking paws in the house. What up? <laughs> <laughs> the thing about this movie. Your pet is better than my pet because when I put my dog to the mic, he just breathes and like. Uh-huh. 
What are you thinking about? What we're gonna do? What's up, Six Falls? What you gonna do? You wanna be, you wanna be in there? Okay, all right, <laughs> bet. Yeah, bet. There you go. You're hired. You're good. Enjoy. <laughs> He's gonna start biting your feet, probably. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, feet he does that. Yeah. Your feet aren't exposed though. You should. Be no, okay. no, I'm good. All right. But the other thing is that um, the antagonist makes the uh, protagonist make tough choices. You know, and the uh, um, things that I have wrote as examples are the Joker and Batman. Of course. Um, um, Clarence Bodinger for RoboCop. You know, he was like, he was, he was evil personified. Yeah. He was, and then Simon Phoenix and um, um, John Spartan from uh, uh, Demolition Man. You know, Demolition Man to me is one of the is one of the great examples of a science fiction universe that would. It, it's really brilliant in that it's a science fiction universe that you don't need any backstory to understand. No, you don't. Like if you watch no. Star Trek: First Contact, mm-hmm. which is a great sci-fi movie, right? You should probably have some level of understanding of the Star Trek universe. Yeah, or it's at least gonna start out kind of confusing. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, but then when you Demolition. watch Demolition Man, they gave yeah. you a brief summary of what happened, and then they just ran into it. You know, yeah, and they just and they just introduced you to these aspects of that society exactly without any you know exactly. without any forewarning there wasn't a universe already created and that's what we're that. aiming for you yeah. know agree yeah that's bonkers oh yeah dude yeah. this is gonna be super hard yeah and, and then uh i'm the just end. gonna start coming in here when when i'm bored yeah and yelling into this microphone like the mayor yeah and hoping it's dialogue and then the, the next thing is the antagonist and the protagonist they share the same goal they want to control the city okay somebody has to win somebody has to lose period you know and then with you as the mayor you want to control your city and get rid of them but then they want to get rid of you and well, and, and lawlessness too because i would assume that i would have never assumed power without their support right at yeah at some point yeah you know exactly maybe there's some so pers- yeah it's, it's a big purse it's a big conflict of interest yeah like my evil like my twin brother with the eye patch and he dies <laughs> in the first episode mm-hmm. you know and that was the only thing keeping me alive right within right there. But yeah, I I have wrote down um the gritty '80s style look, Terminator Two, yeah. um the uh the first forty eight, which is a current show on A and E. The interrogations that they do, they're really gritty, you yeah, know, they're because they yeah. you know they're they're they're, really they're real cases, yeah. yeah, yeah. But still, you know, um, RoboCop, Judge Dredd, um, Akira, have you you know the no, the course. Japanese anime, yeah yeah, 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 you know things like that to where it's not you you know that the city is. They went through their phase and then they want to build the new utopia. But at the same time, they're not quite there because they have to go through this grittiness. And then somebody has to win. Yeah. Somebody has to win and somebody has to lose. So. And there has to be like a grand goal at the end. Too, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, which yeah. would be some sort of like. Oh, yeah. Some sort and of the, internal harmony that requires a lot of war to get to. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then um, they, we have flawed protagonists. Everybody who you see will have some sort of flaw. Whether it's booze, sex, drugs, you know, kickbacks, corruption, nobody's perfect. The mayor could be bad at podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing if we can be, if we can if we can build that in, then we can do that. You know, uh, um, it's a lot of ambiance like and the uh, mayor, ambient like, sound. Takes heroin and tries to do a podcast. Oh yeah, yeah. It's pretty open, you know. And the world is there. It's got to be shot in twenty-four frames per second. That's you know the standard for movies, yeah. motion pictures. So well, yeah, what do you uh, do? You want to do stop motion too, though? Uh, no, are I there monsters stop or anything? Stop, no, no. It's twenty-four frames a second. Is that's it? That's no, uh, no, twenty-four frames per second. Any time you go to the movies and see a movie, it's shot in twenty-four yeah. FPS. You know, twenty-four frames a second is reality. Yeah. That's as, as far as we understand it. Oh yeah. And whatever definition you retrieve right. it. Any movie that you see second. is in anything other than twenty four frames per second, you would automatically notice it and you'll be like, Wow, yeah. this and is crazy. And you might barf. Right. Yeah. It definitely. And Especially when you the, see it on a big screen. That's yeah. the problem with virtual reality is all virtual reality. like the best virtual reality I think is two hundred frames a second. Right. And even that makes a lot of right. people queasy. Oh yeah. I don't even, well, how do we end up there? Um, yeah, I was just saying, you know, um, but the right. equipment and everything, we have all the equipment, we have all the software, and I'm just flipping through my notes right now. Uh, it's just going to come down to the dialogue and then how we do it. I want to shoot it in black and white um, because I love black and white as a medium. I think that it you come through as more 
Um, yeah, it's more, it, it'd be more drama filled if you do it in black and white. But I mean, once we get everybody together and we start doing a dialogue and everybody meets everybody and we understand the, the, the story and how it's going to go and what we need to accomplish, then it will come out pretty great. So, you know, I, I think that we're on the great path. We just have to really write some dialogue and then have people yeah tap into their selves and then to their emotions like yeah. to 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 do it you know because not to editorialize but i feel like you have a very good idea of where this is going yeah you explained this to me not that long ago mm -hmm. and literally tonight my understanding of it went from like well it's gonna be like short episodes of the wire to it's gonna be like an entire expansive universe right. of science fiction yeah like my interpretation mm -hmm. of even the like how you attack it right you know what i mean like even right, how right. you like right. begin to put it together yeah. is completely different in my head oh yeah it makes me want to paint every wall around me green <laughs> right <laughs> that's what you're gonna have to do yeah you know what I mean? all the green screen and everything you're you gonna know? have to yeah. like we're gonna. I. I guess I'm involved. Yeah, in we're gonna have to. Damn. Have to yeah, we're gonna have to scout some locations and everything. Into you know. Green. Yeah. That's what it's gonna end up being. Yeah. And you will have to envision and create. Mm hmm Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant futurescape. Oh yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's it's gonna be awesome, man. It's setting a nice. future that's not too far in the future, but you know, technology is controlled by the local for authorities and the government. Uh, regular people cannot have con um, technology, so to speak. So they are controlled by their lack of um, basically uh, the things that we take for granted right now are cell phones and everything. And then there are going to be people who bootleg that and have it illegally. And then they're going to be we're going to come after them. And in addition to going after the syndicate, every leg of the syndicate has to be attacked whether it's the money laundering the pimping the sex trafficking drugs of course yeah and then there's a know, person who's then, in charge exactly. of each one of those wigs yeah. no yeah. no no you've built it up beautifully mm -hmm. for having a limitless amount of expansion of stories yeah and all of that yeah but you know you have to focus in on a brief like on a small mm -hmm. scale early on yeah but yeah no it's limitlessly expansive mm-hmm Limitless, limitedly, limitlessly, limit, limitless, limit, just limitless, limitless, limitless. yeah. But really for in, yeah, but yeah. anybody who's listening to this, go, um, uh, go on Facebook and like, um, uh, Men of the Badge. That's the official uh, page of the movie, and there are going to be many uh, updates. There's going to be some trailers that will be shot Men soon. Men of the Badge fooled me so bad. I thought you were doing the wire. Yeah, it does. Yeah, right. Pick yeah. a better city than than Baltimore. No, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. There's of course, yeah, cities. yeah. I'm just saying. I, I I made up a city. Um, we're just gonna go for that. It's, called, it's not called Tittyville. No, we're gonna have to come up with another name. Here's where I <laughs> fucked up. I I came up with. I, I was like, I was like, I was like, you know what? I was gonna call it uh, Metro City, but then Metro City was used in. Uh, nah, it's too. Cool. What's it called? What's what's that movie? Um, was it not The Incredibles? But it's uh, damn it! It was a, it was like a Disney movie, but they called it Matrocity. Remember? Um, Not Secret Life of Pets. No, no, You're no. You talking no, about no. the Incredibles? No, it wasn't Incredibles. Hold on, hold on. Give me a second. This is silly. Either way, we're talking about names for cities, right? And I know that you know <laughs> in the if you like Men of the Badge and any of its incarnations <laughs> on the internet, it's like this is the Baltimore Police Department. All right. <laughs> That's cool, but we're going to need a whole <laughs> bunch of green felt to make it look like we're standing next to lakes and rivers. Megamind. That's what it was. Remember, have you seen Megamind? No. Megamind is an awesome movie. I don't think so. But they were in Metro City. What's up, Bree? So we're going to have to come up with another name. You're fine. Come on. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Bree. You can say it. This is Pod Caviar. We do crazy things all the time. Say things. Say things. Things. There we go. Yeah. You okay? Everything all right? Everything's great. Good. Is it really good? Sometimes. Yeah. All right. But yeah, we're good, Stop man. Stop taking my lighter. Oh, shit, where's mine? Nope, all right, there, I got mine. Yeah. I don't know. 
It's a pretty good movie. Oh, Dinner for Schmucks yeah. is a movie. Yeah. What are we eating as far as schmucks are concerned? <laughs> It looks awful smoky out there. Is something burning in the... <laughs> is there a fire out there? But yeah, we're, we're good. We're, we're going to be good, man. We're, we're working towards it. And then um, after yeah. we get some some footage shot and some trailer shot, then I'm going to roll into the second season of Podcast for Y'all, which is going to be amazing. Um, I shared the list of episodes with Graham, and then you know he's excited yeah. for it. And then... We're just, we're, we're, man, we're doing big things. Don't put words in my mouth. Stop fucking taking <laughs> breaks for doing podcasts. Don't. Do it's it. a season. It's a seasonal podcast. Yes. You and Tina Fey with your <laughs> seasons. There's no seasons. You're doing a podcast. Even yeah, if you yeah. take, if you're taking a break, do them every other week. No. People are listening to a pod caviar podcast right now. They are. Yeah. You, I think you're in the face of some editing. This is like probably almost a solid hour. It seems like I'm going to be in the face of some editing, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to edit anything. Well, here we're we are, just going to roll with it. The are. only thing is that when it comes to an hour, the only thing is that SoundCloud will not let me upload it to it. But Fuck everything SoundCloud. else, yeah, but everything else, it'll upload perfectly. So I'm good with it. Fuck it, yeah. you know. And, and that's I what it's going to be. It goes on fucking Spotify. Yeah, it and does all go that on Spotify. Yeah, I didn't. Say, I did. I was yeah. not going to bring up Spotify. You brought it up. Yeah. But since you brought it up, it will be on Spotify. Tony, be honest. <laughs> be honest. How many? Uh, how many babies did you murder <laughs> to get on Spotify? An obscene amount of babies. Yes. Yeah. God damn it! I knew it was a bunch. <laughs> I knew it was more than one. It was, uh, you have hey, you, listen, have you, we've all put a baby in the blender, but have I'm you, just <laughs> have you seen the John Mulaney did a special where he, um, he equalized the Trump administration to a horse being let loose in a hospital? Yes, and then no, it's a pretty much the easily, same thing. Yeah. yeah, John Mulaney's most recent stand up, yeah, it's that hilarious bit about fucking Trump being yeah. a horse oh, loose hey. in the hospital. <laughs> And then they hired somebody to control the horse, uh, and then he fired the person. No, it's <laughs> and they were like, I didn't even know you could do that. And he's no, like, I fired too, the horse. I fired the horse trainer. No, it's too many. <laughs> it's too It's too much. That John Mulaney, you know what's funny, too, is as podcasters, I listen to a lot of stand-up comedian podcasts. Right, right. You know what none of them ever do is give John Mulaney any credit. Which is fucked up. Which makes me wonder, like, was he the one dude who was like, I'm not going to suck Joe Rogan's dick? Yeah. Like. Maybe he was. That, but you know, he's awesome. Him, Kyle Kinane. There yeah. are two of them now. Uh, uh, no. un- unbelievably amazing. John Mulaney's you know? stand-up is, like, and, and across the board. Yeah. Like, everything I've ever heard from John Mulaney mm-hmm. is funny. Yeah. All of it's funny. Oh, yeah. Like, if he was standing next to you in a subway... And he was like, life is a fucking nightmare. You're yeah. like, that's hysterical. <laughs> yeah. But literally every bit of all of his stand-up yeah. is like, I, even if I don't he, laugh, he, he has I'm like, a, I see why that exactly. would be funny. He, it, consistently, the way he delivers his jokes and everything is amazing. And he's just a really good comic. And we're plugging a comedian who probably will never hear this. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I, yeah. You know what's funny though is that part of that was all born from today when I told you that I must insist that you do an episode of Pod Caviar. Yeah. Because I listened to fucking Tom Segura and Christina Pazinski interview Chris D'Elia and they were all like, oh yeah, isn't it the worst? When Chris people- D'Elia is also yeah. pretty good too. He's, Chris D'Elia is fucking super yeah. funny. He's Have you heard murderer. that bit where he did where he was like, every British movie is the same? Mm-hmm. And I fucking, I say that shit every day where he's like, all right, here's what we're going to do. We'll go in, yeah. we'll get the diamonds, put them in a bag, and then yeah. we're going to leave. And then the next day he's like, all right, well, here's what we're going to do gonna do yeah. we'll go in we're gonna get the paintings yeah. put them in a bag and then we're gonna leave and it got progressively more yeah, lunatic <laughs> yeah no no no. Chris D'Elia <laughs> is a killer yeah right yeah but when I'm talking about listening to a podcast right I'm like you motherfuckers tricked me again Rogan tricks people occasionally yeah but these uh, uh cats you know they're stand-up comedians yeah does the general public have a bottomless appetite for listening to stand-up comedians blow each other 
about the burden of their fame it's got to get old. about how oh it's, when you talk when you do comedy in a room of 30 people it's way yeah. different when you're in front of 30,000 people yeah and you're like well and how come it's the got, stewardess doesn't respect me more in right that yeah time? it's got to get old no it's, it's really got to get old it's, it's i would boring. i would um if you go on um youtube or you have serious radio uh the bonfire is a really good show with uh big j okerson and uh dan so they have a good episode and it's hilarious man. and big j is like loosely associated with all those fucking assholes uh, yeah, yeah but also is like and here's why all those people are dicks <laughs> yeah in a very funny way yeah yeah but they have a really good show and um it comes on um i don't know when it comes on i haven't heard it in a while but yeah you can find the old episodes on youtube we are they're, they're plugging funny. the shit out of, out of everybody podcasts. yeah <laughs> Let's go ahead and plug each other. Go you'll, ahead. Go ahead and plug have, your you'll podcast. Have to, you'll have to edit this, I'm assuming, at some point. No. I'm not going to edit no. this. I, guess I love giving love. I mean, if, it, if, if it's true. people that we those really enjoy, you love. know. Yeah. yeah. No, and those things Why are not? Good. Yeah. 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 I feel like if we don't give love to other comedians, then we're just as bad as the people that we complain about, really. Fuck it. God damn it. <laughs> All right. Well, the One Graham Army podcast is fucking me uh, listen i'm a single father i work really hard i sit at a desk and yeah. make fun of you on social media so yeah. go listen to my podcast mm-hmm. it's gonna sound a lot like the podcast you just got done listening to because yeah. tone will probably be there yeah and in the future i've told him i tried to tell him i don't want to <laughs> i i'm gonna i'm not gonna appear on your podcast but you keep be like hey what do you think <laughs> yeah, right which brings us to now but anyway oh, yeah. Yeah. it's the one gram army podcast oh, at yeah. O N E underscore G R A H A M underscore Army, wherever you get it. There you go. You know? And Graham and I have been doing a lot of things for years. If you shit. can find, I would say right now, if you can find an. A, a an album or a track of music that we used to do, I will personally mail you a two dollar bill do that we, I will order from the treasury. Do we close this podcast out with cowards? Do it. Yeah. You still got it? It's on here somewhere. Fuck yeah, do that shit. All right. Yeah, well, we could do that. Yeah. But yeah, uh uh 1417 is the number to get into and get in touch with Pod Caviar. <laughs> if you wanna talk, if you wanna text, if you wanna show love, if you wanna hate, fuck it, you know. I mean, more than likely we will either discuss uh what you talk about on the show and it will be civil or if you're hating then we'll make fun of you because we don't give a fuck you know yeah, exactly we're or just two guys you. making a podcast yeah or who thank both you have for kids being involved. and then we have full-time jobs and we do this shit so if you come at us disrespectful then we're gonna have fun making fun of you that's what we do that's what we've always done but yeah, yeah. this has been a great episode and um can um, you walk can you caveat me playing yeah cowards a bit oh yeah 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 there. back in the back in the day uh <laughs> a, a long time ago in a galaxy far far away <laughs> we used to make music and it was amazing music and it's beautiful and we made some albums and everything and then life got in the way and we just didn't do it anymore and then we yeah, started doing a podcast they were doing, yeah doing podcast podcast is a lot better than music because we used to do oh, some fucking doesn't have lock the door and we're gonna stay in here it doesn't have to rhyme yeah it doesn't have to rhyme at all yeah. no although this feels similar yeah this episode of your podcast is the only reason why i was like you know what <laughs> let's close out with oh, some yeah. music yeah but we're gonna close it for oh yeah we're gonna close out with one of the tracks that we did and then hopefully you enjoy it and if not, then we can, you know we just don't care. Yeah. We don't care. Yeah. Laugh, yeah. <laughs> laugh at us or laugh with us. Here exactly. It goes. Exactly. But yeah, this has been Pod Caviar. I'm your host Tony Baltimore, and I'm out. Can't be serious.